Yeah, I'm just straight up too lazy to go and hunt it down. But this is James Bond 007 on the Game Boy. James Bond 007 on the Game Boy is probably a game that's not terribly well known, but it's a game my brother and I played quite a bit in our youth. It was always in the side pocket of our van along with our Game Boy Colors. My brother got it at a Target, and I think I got my Final Fantasy Tactics Strategy Guide at the same time. That book got a lot of use, but I finally had to get rid of it after all those years. We did a lot of road trips as a family, so James Bond 007 got played a lot. I know for a fact we never beat it, at least I never did. A lot of the stuff you have to do is quite cryptic and involves a lot of runaround in a maze. For our probably 9 or 10 year old selves at the time, combined with only really playing it in the car, that's not really surprising that I didn't finish it. This is going to be the final game with SD footage. It's also probably going to be my shortest review to date since James Bond 007 on the Game Boy is very basic. This section includes spoilers, so skip to this timecode if you wish to avoid them. James Bond 007 starts off in China. He infiltrates a martial arts dojo and beats up a woman named Zong Mei and steals the secret plans. He runs away and makes a smooth getaway in a speedboat. After returning to London, M tells Bond to find Agent 008, whose last known location was in Kurdistan. Bond jumps through a bunch of hoops in the Kurdish town, which includes killing their leader and rescuing 008. 008 gives Bond information and 007 goes to Merak to find Odd Job. Bond goes through a huge runaround to shoot a guy in the neck with a dart from a secret location in the catacombs. Then he wanders all the way back to the casino and nonchalantly takes the key from his pocket. After getting into Odd Job's hotel room, Odd Job knocks out James Bond and leaves him in a desert. Bond gets out of the desert and arrives at an airport, and an agent tells you that M told you to go to Tibet, and then he is captured by Odd Job again. Zong Mei breaks Bond out of his cell, and James Bond works on getting his equipment back and eventually finds Odd Job, who he beats by using a shield to deflect his magical hat. Bond gets information from Odd Job that the weapon smuggling is being headed by General Golgov of Russia. Bond returns to Kurdistan to do a thing, then he goes after General Golgov. Jaws is defending the entrance, and James Bond defeats him with fucking Magnus. General Golgov reveals he wants to start a nuclear war and become king of the world. Then he gets into a metal. Here. And Bond defeats it. Then Zong Mei and the Bond disable the nuclear missiles and escape on a boat together. Then the game's over. I mean, what do you want here? It's fan service and a very basic James Bond plot. You know the drill. So, oddly enough, the most obvious game to compare James Bond 007 with is actually Legend of Zelda. You're doing a lot of questing. There's a lot of walk around, you get this thing, you go talk to a guy, you trade thing for thing, you go to the next area. The way you handle your equipment is exactly like the Game Boy Zelda's as well. You map your items to A and B, and you can swap them out whenever you choose. For the majority of the game, you also use a machete and a shield, <laughs> so it's almost exactly like Zelda combat-wise as well. The real James Bond doesn't hack his enemies to pieces with a machete like he's part of some kind of drug cartel, so that's a bit uncharacteristic, but I'll give it a pass. The shields you get are also kind of strange. There's one for deflecting lasers, like a mirror shield, and there's one for deflecting and stopping bullets. The final stretch of the game doesn't have you in some amazing shootout, it's literally you alternating between shields to get around turrets shooting lasers and bullets. It's, it's very odd. Other than that, I don't really have a lot to say about the gameplay. Like I said, it's basically like a Zelda game. Do you like the James Bond theme in MIDI format? I sure hope you do, because these songs play constantly. I would say for the rest of the game, it's very heavy handed with the fan service. Jaws and Odd Job make an appearance for no reason other than they're recognizable characters from the series. You do some gambling, you do James Bondy things, which is really all you could ask for in this kind of game. Graphically, it's pretty bad. The hit detection is pretty wonky, to say the least. For a Game Boy game, it kind of give it a pass. It's not good, even by Game Boy game standards, but it's not awful. You can kind of make out what everything is, so that's important. The parts I struggled with the most were the desert, the junkyard before Jaws, and the final stretch. The desert feels like a total crapshoot to get through, honestly. I used a guide since the little radar thing was totally useless, I thought. It's pretty frustrating, but I got through it in less than 10 minutes regardless of multiple attempts and using a guide. The junkyard just has a lot of enemies and you get worn down through straight attrition. It doesn't help that before you get to this part, you're captured and stripped of all your med packs that you've acquired throughout the game, so that part really sucks. I lost a lot of med kits, and that was quite frustrating. 
the final stretch is the same. You have very little in terms of med packs because, again, they've been confiscated from earlier. It's very easy to get hit by bolts or lasers, even if you're using the appropriate shields, since the hit detection is pretty wonky, like I said. There's also a few sections where you need to do something kind of unintuitive, which is like, put your shield up, walk into a wall, because you can't really change direction with the shield while walking. It's very, very strange. It doesn't work very well. It's a bit difficult, but like I said, I got through it pretty easily. James Bond 007 on Game Boy is short. My total playtime was 3 hours, 18 minutes, and 28 seconds, but it actually has a lot of sections that are quite long. It's very easy to get lost in the black market and the catacomb sections in the second level because they're strictly mazes. And they're very difficult to navigate, and again, don't have a map. There's also a part where you need to win money at a casino, and that part is 100% luck based. You have to play card games to turn your $1,000 into something like $2,500. The only reliable way to do this is by save scumming or just straight up through attempts of betting everything you've got then returning to the teller for another thousand dollar line of credit if you run out. It's very awkward. I know for a fact it's because it's James Bond and the high rolling casino things are a staple but it could have been handled a lot better. You know, like I said, you go, you bet all your money, you lose it, you return to the teller for a thousand dollars. They may as well have just given you a three thousand dollar line of credit and let you go to the back or at table right away. I don't have a lot to say about the entertainment. It was fun to finally sit down and beat this game that my brother and I played quite a bit but never managed to get too far in. I think the furthest that I ever got was to bet. It's pretty campy and fun at times, but really honestly there's just not a lot here. The main problem I have with games like this is that we don't have the same problems we used to have. It used to be that, you know, when you were a kid you had a Game Boy and that was... The games weren't as good as they were on the home console because, you know, you didn't have the power in the Game Boy and the portability and batteries and all that. So games usually had a concession in quality for the novelty of taking it on the go. And since we don't have that problem anymore, it's kind of hard to get excited about James Bond 007 on the Game Boy. Obviously there are some limitations due to the hardware. Handheld gaming back in the pre-2000s basically meant you had to take a concession in quality for the novelty of taking it with you. Not all games, but most of them. The one change I would do is remove the trapped items, I guess. Enemies can drop health or bullets and they look like a generic box. But sometimes you'll pick up like a booby trap box that has like a grenade in it and it damages you. When you're low on health and are really desperate to pick up those healing items so that you don't get killed, it's really annoying when you do get killed by one. It's just really frustrating. Then there's just making things like the desert a bit more forgiving and probably just straight up adding a map to make navigating and backtracking easier. James Bond is really basic, but, you know, there's a little stuff, I think it just, I don't know, it doesn't, it's not perfect, it's not great, it just kinda, it just kinda is. I think at the end of the day, it's very safe to avoid James Bond 007 on the Game Boy. The gameplay isn't particularly fun and it's very basic. The music is definitely grating with the same tracks looped over and over again. A lot of areas are mazes and frustrating to navigate. On the Game Boy, you have straight up better options for this kind of genre, like Link's Awakening or the Capcom Zelda's Oracle of Ages, Oracle of Seasons. I'm glad I beat it after all these years, but do yourself a favor and just, just skip it. I think even if you were a huge fan of James Bond, you'd be better off playing something else. Matt! You're okay! So far, so good. I haven't seen anyone else yet. They'll turn up. They always do. It's the CO I'm worried about. Why? What happened? By the time I was ready to jump, the chopper was completely out of control. I was barely able to get out myself. When I looked back, it had burst into flames. And Dan was still inside. But remember, we're talking about Daredevil Dan here. A little fire couldn't stop our fearless leader. I hope you're right. Well, at least things can't get any worse. Not after the start we've just had. Honestly, John Luke, I didn't expect there to be so many of them. If we make it out of here alive, I think I'll start going to church again. It won't help to think about it. There's only one way out. I guess you're right. Okay, break time's over. Let's get those bastards. Now you're talking. Let's go. 